Ebusi afu ne ti fo ni de kwan so me ma obi bia akwa baba channel so hi daily update tv ni de kwan so se ne no first time baba channel so me so se oti news ni we na se woni job subscribe no like no share news no so ma o love se nya bi eti yakopon sha no nya okes me pa cho chada 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 o da new force ano na wapia baba ntinde insem bia betu jana insem a o da betu jana de editi me insem o mre me pese e be zoom straight into the old ni akoni akoti se da me kan Send an offer to our batch and so I'm a patch message or say, Oh, you know, I could teach you Tina so when you jump a subscriber for more updates like Nation News and so Yanko Punchan on your case. And so the Yanko Ninko Tin and Sama Chada, a leader of the new force where Pia Babon Tinny in Sama Batuja. What can send me bring Tinko Ninko Tin, Midasipa? Talk about the convention. Yeah. There also is that incident with Shalima Abuisi. Yeah. Who is now back in Belgium. Yesterday, my colleague Raymond Akwa had a bit of a conversation with her. Has that? Her deportation, has it impacted the work of New Force? Um, I would say that it was supposed to take away the reputation of New Force. First of all, by saying that, you know, that's some fraudulent document and uh, uh, illegal immigrant and whatnot and so forth. But you know, but, but you know those were valid, valid problems, valid concerns. I don't think so. Did you, you look don't into think so? it properly? You don't think so? Did you? Did you see the documentation from you know the immigration customs did and the rest see and what what they did what you they see said? the documentation? Ben? Did, did you I, hear I like, what they no, said? No, 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 no. I'd like to correct you. You were asking Which a question what? that did you see the documentation? Did mm. you? Because you well, know, we saw, you, we you saw cannot, records of what you they cannot, said. No, no, no. You cannot use words to describe things that are legal. You need mm. evidence, mm. okay? That's why there's exhibit. You need exhibit to charge people in the law, mm. okay? You cannot just say, Mr. Kwesi is a thief. That's it. So are you, are, are you insinuating that the immigration service lied? Uh, no, 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 no. I am asking you the question that you asked me so you can mm. answer it properly. Mm. That Did you see the proof? Because I will answer your question about that. I think that, you know, if the new force have hired um, someone that is... Uh, uh, had something to do with their visa in their country and this and as a spokesperson and okay then the new force is also a fraud mm. but you know I think that was the long-term goal you know to put that kind of image around the force like I said you know it's important for the country to listen to the message and not you know uh, target the messenger okay let's listen to the message first mm. and it, this was a target on the messenger. Now, targeted by whom? Well, I think that you, you, you ask yourself for the first time in history, and this makes it very interesting, that for the first time in history, you know, Ghanaians are deporting Europeans, <laughs> okay? Like, people are coming from Europe, that great system that they have, to come and make fake papers in Ghana so they can live here. When the person was already living in this country for three years, we only met her four months before that whole conversation and that whole report, that position that we put her in. That is one. I want to explain, I want to use this very moment to explain this to Ghanaians, what happened with the Shalimas case. So first of all, the new force started this project. And then when the news and everybody sort of held on to the new force, trying to find the person behind the mask and everything, we offered so many Ghanaians young people, mid-aged people, can you be our spokesperson? Can you say, everybody's running away. I'm sorry. There's, we're living around... Wait, you, you, you made the offer to yes, Ghanaians yes. and no one would take it up. They're scared. Everybody is scared. And I'm saying it and anybody that came across me, they can... And it was Shalima who was willing to take up I'm the I'm coming, mantra. I'll tell you. So, we met Shalima at the Mepe. Mepe. Uh, Mepe when we went to do our donations there. And okay. she was also there doing her donations, you know, uh, and, I, and I think Honorable Ablaka, you know, came and they were together. And then, and, and, and so she came to support and uh, uh, the, the whole thing. And when we met her, we got in touch. She came, we spoke, we vet her, we, we did the vetting on her. And then um, we did the KYC as well. She mm. told us that she's a presenter. She used to work for... EIB, which is GH1, mm. you know, as a presenter. So she's been there and she's a model and everything. So I listened to her speak. She was very articulate. And I said, okay, maybe I will use her for our report as a spokesperson. Mm. 
So we just decided that let's use her. But besides the point, we also realized that, you know, it was going to be a very good publicity stunt. Mm. You know, if we were to use a white person to speak on our behalf. For me, as the leader of the new force, I thought that, you know, it was good to even show Ghanaians that we're now hiring even white people to come and work for us, you know, in speaking for us, in reporting for us. For Ghanaians, they looked at it as, oh, who is the white person to come into our politics, this, that, that, that. But who said we were politicians? New force. We hadn't said anything. We hadn't reported that we were a political party. We, no. We were just suspected to be a political party that is yet to unveil. So we being a movement, we had any right to hire anybody to be our spokesperson or to be our reporter. But they turned it around and made it look like, oh, we're doing politics and we brought white people from outside to come and do, no, 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 we cannot do that. I cannot disrespect the nation like mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. I'm going to bring a white person when our history is about colonial, you know, for them to come and form a political party. No, 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 that's not the picture. Now, let's clear this once and for all on the national television. She was the bold person to volunteer to be the spokesperson. And mm. I still stand by her, you know. But talking about her being arrested, mm. that's what we need to look into. Okay, so as we look into that, you say you vetted her. Yes, we did. You vetted her. Yeah. Did you also maybe inquire to see whether she had the right to work, to engage in the activity? She was not working. No, no hold. Yeah. Whether she had the right to work or do engage in the activity that you were giving her to she do. She had a student visa. Mm. A student visa in her passport. That student visa was an authentic visa from the immigration. It's not a fake visa. Right. And when someone volunteers, it's not a job. He says, I want to do it for free. Okay? That's what she said. And she did it for free. And after she did it for free, the video became so impactful that even on her own page, it was the first time she had had 1.2 million views in two days. I okay, see. so it was very powerful. It was circulating. The message was powerful. It was piercing. Now, when she got arrested, how did she get arrested? She just got a phone call that come to the immigration. Okay, now there was a lawyer that was, you know, helping in the vetting situation with Shalima, who was in her office. And that lawyer was the only one that, you know, showed us uh, the visa in her passport, you know, and in two days, we get a call. <laughs> that, that lawyer seems to be, you know, I don't know if it's with us or from the other side, and she goes, when she goes... You think maybe this person ratted you out? Oh, I don't think so. I think that there are people around me who are from other parties, but, you know, for me, I'm just in the middle. I'm just doing my thing. I don't have to point any fingers. Okay, let's see whatever people do mm -hmm. will turn out to be. But what happened was when she went there and she was supposed to be interrogated, instead, they kept her. Okay, because it's not like she got arrested. She went there, so you didn't have to keep her. <laughs> You understand? You could have given a bill and tell her to come and, and, you know, and do your investigation. But she got arrested straight away. And when she got arrested, the mistake that happened was that they kept her only one night with the immigration and then took her straight to NIB. So, you know, that's National Investigation of Bureau. So it, now it, it had moved from... It carries Pisa. a different weight. Yeah, it yeah. carried a different weight. And we said, wow, okay, so the most we can do is just wait for the two days, which is by the human right law, the most time you can hold anyone. But what happened was the two days came uh, uh, and three o'clock, they rushed her from the place and left the lawyer there, just her to court. So as all of this was happening, you knew? Oh, yes, happened. we were following because now I was responsible for someone's daughter who has volunteered to do something for us. And all of a sudden, my country and the government is holding her. We saw this video of her parents and later her parents came weeping. Yes. And how did that make you feel? No, the parents were already here. No, so, there was a video prior before they came into town, and then we saw others. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, but. That, was, that was disheartening. But I, I, I would like to finish, you know, what I'm saying, that what, what happened really, so people can get a clearer picture, you know, as in terms of the deportation and all of this and what is brought, okay? Uh, it was disheartening, and I'm, I feel very sorry for the parents, and I've already apologized to Shalima, the parents, and, you know, yes, I still stand by her. She's a great person, the family's great people. But when they went to court... They didn't have any charge for her, but they still decided to keep her.
for the next four days to do the investigation. So that's how mm. come they kept her for seven days without a charge. Okay, and the seventh day is when they brought the charge to the court. But the seventh day, I had changed the lawyer to Sosu. You know? Francis Xavier Sosu. Yes, right. and uh, he did a great job, brought, brought her out. And then she had a seven day to, to report back to the court. That's seven days that she was supposed to go back. So Sue demanded some things, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he demanded from the uh, immigration was the document that was forged <laughs> to get that uh, uh, student visa. Because the student visa is authentic. It's from the country. Right. It's issued by immigration. So mm -hmm. where is the document that you are saying that based on this document, mm -hmm. she's a fraudulent? That document is what they couldn't produce. In the next seven days so you realize that when they went to court they had to drop all the cases quickly and release her and when they release her she was immediately arrested again arrested but this time by immigration nib and military and within eight hours they pushed her in a plane and sent her out she mm -hmm. had the right to pick her properties to pick things nothing this was very forceful and i think that triggered some things outside you know, because now the country and other people and, and media and journalists started looking into it. So I didn't even know that the national accounts, Ghana's accounts in Belgium, had been closed. <laughs> Four of them. I, I am not privy to this. Oh, you can Google it. It's there now. You know, and Ghana's that, accounts in Belgium yeah, 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 have been closed. Yeah, it had on been. the back of what happened to Shalima. Bussi. No, 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 no. It had been closed before, previously. It, okay. Yeah, so they closed it. And I think it, due to that, there was a blacklisting by the EU which now they're being delisted, you know. So this has happened, and now it's looking like, you know, the country was now um, sort of uh, um, revenging <laughs> with the girl. Oh, so, I, now, I now get the picture. So, so this is what has made it. It's going to BBC. It's going to other platforms. I'm not the one. It's not New Force. New Force genuinely just used her. And all of these things happened. It's just triggered things, and it's now making also Europe. You know, who is this new force, and, and 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 what's going on, and why is the government? You know, so so in the end, it, you feel it has given you capital. It, 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 it has it, served it, your purpose. It, it was supposed to devalue our credibility, but it's brought curiosity to our vision and our mission. Which is a plus. So you don't think using her has put any dent on your image? Oh, right? it, it, it kind of has because of the words that came out and what people were saying. But then if you go into it, it's not over. There is a uh, human rights, whatever, whatever things going on. And that's between Shali and, you know, the government. And, you know, that's, that's, that's them. But, right. You know, we, 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 we've, we've triumphantly uh, been able to move on. And we moved from the Shali to even the next stage, which is the convention. And I'm sure you want to act about that too. I'll get there in a minute. I just have a question about money though. And listening to you, I see again, you have this courage and you speak about what you've attained as a young man. Even when you had that press conference, you spoke about how for 21 years of your life, you had invested it in giving young people a picture of what wealth looks like. We'll get into the other conversations. But how are you bankrolling all of this, whether as a movement or eventually as a political party funding? How do you have people supporting you? Um, at the moment, I mean, these are not things that I really probably because, think. Because really, I mean, you, the billboard saga, right? Uh, people, if you picture the number of billboards and how much it costs to, to just erect one, people were, and some of them were unfortunately vandalized. People say, wow, how, how could they do all of that? How did you do it? I mean, look. The power of wisdom, it's the demonstration of wealth. You know, when you have a great mindset, you can have a little and it looks so big. <laughs> when you apply your wisdom to it, it looks so powerful. I mean, look, I took about six, seven proposals from different advertising companies. And um, I just needed to get 150 to 180 billboards that will be spread uh, among the regions. Okay, the regions were 16 regions and I wanted to be present and I realized that some of them would just need four. Some of them would need five. Some of them would need 20. Some of them would need 10. So I put it all together and then I asked to pay for a third of it instead. And I used that as my first teasing marketing campaign. You know, and it, it, even when I look at it, it looks so powerful. But 
I will give credit to the wisdom more here than the funding. Wisdom. <laughs> yeah, the, the wisdom behind the analogy okay. of marketing with one marketing company and asking them to spread just 150 billboards, you know, appropriately and proportionally, you know, and giving full presence and all of that. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you that for the marketing, you know, tact and the application of wisdom, as you say. But even if, uh, just, just to look into it, uh, 150 billboards at a cutoff rate and all of that, people will still ask, that's quite a lot. Um, question is, are you doing this on your own as part of that drive to, listen, I want to bring the youth to a new dawn? Or do, you, or do you have supporters? Oh, at the moment, that's my investment. That's my team. You know, okay. we are investing. And also remember that some of these uh, third-party um, companies that we're using are also people that, you know, want some sort of give in in exchange of um, publicity and other things, you know, like the marketing okay, company. Okay, so you're doing some barter here. Yeah, the marketing company is now, they've gone from fourth to one, you know, mm -hmm. so everyone can see that the blue poles is, you know, it's really everywhere, you know. It's a, it's a, like I said, let's give credit to the wisdom, you know. And I think that Ghana wants to know, that, how are you funding all of this? When you build a building, they say, how are you building all, all of this? People are not even asking, uh, do you own some banks? And if so, how do you sleep? And how are you paying them, you know? Do, do, you, owe, do you owe any uh, well, banks? Well, I, I Have you taken to, any loans? Yes, I used to own um, uh, World Bank. <laughs> They were the first people I decided to borrow from when we were building number the one. The World Bank? Yeah, the World Bank. Oh, you mean number one place in Australia? Yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. we wanted, we, you know, we, we just wanted that badge and, you know, myself and my partner. But, you know, we've managed to pay it off because we realized that we were becoming slaves to the loan. You know, we, we, it's a tough thing, but, you know, yeah. And okay, now so I'm, I'm quite uh, debt-free. You're debt-free? Yeah. Undi obiaka? Well, unless... Nanakwa me be diako ndi obiaka. You want to make it like ndi obiaka. I own the nation. I owe you to sit here and no, give I'm, you my I'm time. Talking no. Of, I'm no, talking no, no, no. Of Let me answer your question, okay? So you don't re-narrate it. And I want to correct you, okay? What I've invested in the nation is because mm. of what I owe them. Mm. I feel like I'm partly responsible to the best development of this country. Mm. So if I manage to get myself out of the bank debt... Mm -hmm. and then take my little to advertise myself, to promote myself, to campaign myself, so I can become a leader, a leader that will have the chance to build platforms and create wealth and create jobs and create this. What does that tell you? Mm -hmm. I owe you. I owe my life to the nation. No, no, no. At least, I wouldn't be what it reminded me of was Lord Kenya's song from back then, <laughs> Exactly. That's actually where I was leaning. But still, I just want to, you know, to conclude on this point. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, yes. But wisdom is not money. The application of wisdom can do many things. Uh, I'm sure you are aware as well. No, just, just, just hold for me briefly. I, I'm sure you, when I'm done, you will, you will get where I'm going. Uh, per our political um, regulations in the Constitution, it talks about political party funding. The reason I'm asking this, I wish you could see some of the messages coming through. People are very concerned because they feel these other parties have not done certain things right. I want you to explain to Ghanaians, beyond your own pockets, there's no one behind New Force, such that these people sending messages will also know that this young man standing here, he's doing that from his position, and that is it. I think that's a fair question. Well, this is a very fair question. Yes, mostly and everything is by us, from us now. But I want the nation... Mostly. To, yes, mostly, okay? I want the nation to understand that I am coming to you to support me. I ha just because you haven't seen me ask you, I am coming to ask you to donate to help me because I'm changing the narratives of politics in the history of Ghana. Now, why do I think this is changing it? If you look at the Western uh, democratic system, okay, every politician that becomes a leader or a president, he goes to the people, 
It doesn't matter whether he's a billionaire, he's a business person, or he's poor. He goes to the people and say, please donate, help me to campaign. And the people put a dollar, five dollars, whatever dollars they want to contribute to this person. So he has some capital to campaign, because campaign does cost money. Okay, it costs a lot. I might have to sell my building to pay for some billboards and to pay for some buses and to pay for people that are working, pay for media and pay for everything. Now, I want you to understand this analysis that I'm about to give you clearly that if this person goes to them and they give a dollar, five dollar and ten dollars and then you come to Africa. Or let's say that person becomes a president. The people that have given him a dollar or five dollars or whatever, he now owns them. He, he